Then I felt another pair of arms around us. It was... <laughs> Jake appears out of the abyss. Namoy, it's joining. Good evening. Welcome to My Story Animated. It's the place of true, so, so very true animated stories where this woman faked losing her memory. Ooh, what could that mean? She's in a pool and she forgot. <laughs> I'm so intrigued. I must click to find out. I don't know. Let's actually get into it. I think I have loved Jake since we were kids. We were next door neighbors and constant playmates. It was the most natural thing that we became best friends. Jake lived with his grandparents. He was always over my house. I think he enjoyed being part of a normal family. Okay, wow, jeez. I've learned an awful lot about a random bloke named Jake in the first 16 <laughs> seconds. We rode our bikes and flew kites. We played princess and monsters. Jake was always my knight in shining armor. Okay. If it wasn't clear from the intro, uh, these true stories are never really true. Last time, it started off so believable. Some chick had a skin condition, not that hard to believe. And then by the end of it, she was like one of the most successful businesswomen in America. But this one, I already know this one's not true. Because no one, when recounting their story, says, he was my knight in shining armor. It's just not a thing people actually say. Jake and I were inseparable. When we got to junior high, we were each other's dates. It was easier that way. I didn't have to worry if I was pretty enough to be asked by other guys. We did a lot of crazy things together. Okay, so I I've got the picture. You're saying mutual friend zone zone. You're both just friends and you're both just cool with that. Once when we were 10 years old, Jake dared me to drink some of his dad's brandy. It tasted awful. I threw up right after and got a terrible headache the next day. Dang, that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> and Jake's just laughing at you. He doesn't even feel an ounce of remorse. Jake teased me a lot about puking, so I just pretended that I didn't remember anything that happened. Wait, don't tell me that was it. Don't tell me. In the first minute, we have the story about how she faked losing her memory. She was 10 years old, Jake dared her to try some brandy, she threw up, and then to avoid the embarrassment, pretended she didn't remember. There, story done. We can click away. Pack it up, boys. So far, it's a believable animated true story. We can stop right there. I'm joking, obviously. We'll, <laughs> we'll get back to the video. Since we were always together, we just both assumed that we would always be there for each other. We got teased a lot, especially by our families. We just shrugged it off. Besides, I didn't think it was so bad if I ended up marrying Jake when we got older. It would be great to marry my best friend. Ah, okay. There goes the whole uh, mutual friend zone situation. <laughs> Maybe it's more like a friend waiting room zone. Like, like they're friends. They're friends in the meantime. Who knows? We don't have to be friends forever, but we're friends right now and we're both cool with that. I already met my soulmate when I was just four years old. Do you want to meet and marry your soulmate too? Click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to leave a great comment below. But at- What? I'm gonna find my soulmate if I subscribe? These call to action tactics are getting elaborate. Will I get an email? Will they friend me on Facebook? How is this soulmate delivered to me? As we got older, things began to change. I guess it's only natural that Jake started hanging out with other boys. I had other girlfriends too, but my best friend was always going to be Jake. Nothing was ever going to change that. Until... One day, Jake went over to my house and brought a new friend along. Hey, Sarah, he said, this is Gilbert. Gilbert? This is not a Gilbert. Look, if I had to draw a Gilbert, it'd be, it'd be, uh... More like, there's his nose. We give him little lips. And there's his little chin. Here's the back of his head. He has an eyeball. It's a little veiny. Give him a big old nostril. But he also suffers from severe nose hairs. And he's got some like Homer Simpson style hair on top. Oh, he does have ears. Big old ears. Let's give him a shirt and tie. There's his tie. This here is a Gilbert, okay? This, this is not a Gilbert. This is like a, a Ryan or like a... Brad. But anyway, getting the sense that Jake may be, uh, well, this may be a, a closet that he's just slowly walking out of with Gilbert. <laughs> when I looked at Gilbert, my heart totally stopped. He was the most handsome boy I had ever seen. Oh yeah, you are not wrong. I mean, look at those eyes. Look at this chin strap. When the sun hit the top of his head, his golden hair shone like a halo. I felt like I was looking at an angel. Hi, Sarah, <laughs> Gilbert said. He shook my hand and I felt the electricity pass between us. Ooh, this is gonna be a love triangle. Jake asked me if they could hang out with me that day. Of course, I said yes. Gilbert turned out to be a great guy. He was funny and he was a good listener. Yeah, unfortunately, 
His name was Gilbert. I have to admit that I developed a little crush on Gilbert. How could I not? He was so handsome and kind. So, for months on end, it became the three of us. The summer before we all left for college, our parents agreed that we could all take a trip with just the three of us. Oh no! This is where the story turns. End of Act 1. We have set the scene. Now, we are ready to develop the complication. So we went to the beach house of Gilbert's family and stayed overnight. After dinner, Gilbert brought out some drinks. We giggled and laughed a lot, knowing that we weren't old enough to drink yet. Yeah, well, doesn't stop you, does it? <laughs> Miss drinking so much that I throw up when I was 10. Clearly not your first radio. I wasn't used to drinking and I got drunk really fast. The next thing I knew, I was on the couch cuddling with Gilbert. You're oh. so handsome, I told him while I stroked his cheek. Sarah, I think you've had enough to drink. Okay. Good move, Gilbert. I did the most aggressive thing I have ever done in my life. I kissed Gilbert full on the lips. I only stopped kissing Gilbert when I heard the sound of something breaking. When I looked up, I saw Jake looking at us with a shocked look on his face. Oh, I understand the dramatics of dropping your glass, but either that didn't happen, because it never does. No one's ever like, <laughs> You know, it just doesn't happen in real life. And if it does, get a hold of yourself. You know, contain your emotions a little bit. Nothing should be that shocking that you drop the glass in your hand. Maybe. I mean, maybe something. Like if there was like a full-grown grizzly bear in your in your living room, then I can forgive the dramatics. But if you're just seeing your two drunk friends sharing some lip, get a hold of yourself. Somehow, that look brought me to my senses. I blushed, stood up, and apologized. I ran to the bathroom and locked myself in. I felt so guilty about doing something like that, especially in front of Jake. When I remembered his face, I remember seeing anger, disbelief, and a little bit of disgust. Wait, for what? For why? What are the purposes? Is he jealous of him? Of, of her? I'm confused about the angle. Was it just not stated that those two have a thing together? Or is it more that Jake is into... Gilbert. Or is he just upset that his friends are smooching? I knew I loved Jake, but was I in love with him? Should I have kissed him instead? Is this how it felt loving two different people at the same time? Oh, okay. It started out with a kiss. How did it end up like this? It was only a kiss. I felt so confused and I totally dreaded facing the two of them again the next morning. The next morning. You, <laughs> you're gonna sleep in the bathroom. Do not show your face again till the morning. Just the next day, Gilbert tried to talk to me. Uh, Sarah, about last night, he started to say. But Jake butted in. She doesn't remember, he said. When we drank some of my dad's brandy when we were 10 years old, Sarah did a lot of silly things, but she forgot all about them the next day. What? What a weird move by Jake. Like, just butting in. Hey, before you continue, she doesn't remember because, uh, one time when she was 12 years old, she drank a bunch of brandy and she didn't remember it the next day. So that absolutely happened again. In fact, if she has a single drop of alcohol, she will not remember the entire night. Although I remember kissing Gilbert, I decided to play along. I lied and said I didn't remember doing anything the night before. It was just easier to pretend that nothing happened. I see. Now, when you say I faked losing my memory, I get that it's not clickbait, but it's kind of clickbait. Like, oh, I don't remember doing anything last night in my drunken state. It's a little bit different to I faked losing my memory. That memorable evening was the last one we had in a long time. I was off to a different college than the two boys. I was going to miss being with Jake all the time, but it wasn't all that bad. We were still texting and calling each other a lot. So, as much as I've said otherwise, nothing about this is unbelievable yet. But if I know my story animated, just give it time. They will turn it into something completely ridiculous. I just reminded him to be good and not to kiss random girls. You're the random kisser, he teased me. It was a good thing that he couldn't see my face because I still remember that awkward night. I'm confused. By him saying that, I thought he thought that she didn't remember. Did he tell her? Do they all know, but she just pretended that she didn't remember doing it? Like, why would he say that? On my first day back, I heard a frantic knock on my bedroom door. I jumped out of bed quickly and opened the door. Jake was standing there, all tanned and smiling. I hugged him fiercely. Then I felt another pair of arms around us. It was... <laughs> <laughs> Jake appears out of the abyss. That summer almost felt like we were never apart. We spent every day together, just trying to catch up on missed time. What about you, Sarah? Gilbert asked. Break any hearts in that fancy college of yours? I laughed a little too loudly and shook my head. Now that Jake was here, I realized that he was the reason why I never fell for anyone in college. Oh, so sweet. No one understood me like Jake did. 
I looked at him and knew that he felt exactly the same way. I've got to talk to Sarah for a bit, he explained to Gilbert. Ooh. <laughs> when are we going to get to the unbelievable bit? Gilbert nodded and left. Jake asked me to go for a walk. I was feeling kind of excited and nervous. What was he going to say? Was he finally going to let me know that he felt something between us? He's going to pop the question. He's going to get down on one knee, baby. Get ready for the diamond ring. Were we finally finalizing that we were an item now? So we took a walk in the park. We sat down on a bench and he held my hand. There's something I want to tell you, Sarah. I'm gay. <laughs> I swear, that has to be it. There's no way this story goes like, I want to date you. And she's all like, yeah, I want to date you too. And then they're just dating. There's still far too long left in this video. We're only halfway through. He began with all seriousness. I thought to myself, this is it. He's going to tell me that he loves me too. I love you, Sarah, he said. I oh. beamed. I've loved you from when we were kids. I've wanted to tell you something for a long time. I'm gay. <laughs> yeah, it's got a bit. It has to be. I cannot see this story going anywhere else. I know that you'll understand. Sarah, I'm gay. What? Yes! He's done it! He's done it again! <laughs> thank you! Thank you! No, thank you! <laughs> I am too good at this! I'm too good! Take me down! Replace me! Get someone worse! I couldn't believe what I was hearing. How can Jake be gay? I mean, he just told me that he loved me. Then he said something else that was totally unbelievable. He's into Gilbert. In fact, they might be dating. He said that he was in love with Gilbert. And Gilbert mm -hmm. felt the same way about him. Mm -hmm. I just sat there and stared at Jake. This was the last thing that I expected. <laughs> it, it also kind of knocks down, like, the two people in your life who you're actually kind of into. You're into Jake. You think Gilbert's quite a hottie. You kissed him once. Mm. Turns out they're a thing. <laughs> but there was something he knew nothing about. He didn't know that I was in love with him. He kept talking about wanting his own family. He never felt like he was complete because he never knew his own parents. He kept asking me if I understood and if I was still his best friend. I couldn't reply. My heart felt like it was being crushed in my chest. So I stood up and left. I didn't see either Jake or Gilbert again that summer. Uh, jeez. There... <laughs> You gotta think about how that looks, you know? Your lifelong best friend. The person who has been by your side forever. Finally comes out to you as gay. Says, do you accept me? Will you still be my best friend? And you stand up and walk away and do not say a word. You gotta say something. It, it kind of seems like you, you're just a really bad person. I went through a dating craze when I went back to college and I rarely went home. I needed to prove to myself that men could fall in love with me. I needed to prove to myself that I didn't need Jake's love. So I ended up dating Wesley. Wesley? What's with these weird names? And he became my boyfriend. Then one day, I was pregnant. There was no Whoa. other place to go but home. I packed my bags and went home in tears. My life was such a mess. Oh, dang. This took a real quick turn. Within the span of like 10 seconds, we just met Wesley. Now she's pregnant. Now she's moving back home. Her life's a mess. Wesley was just as shocked as I was. He didn't want to be a father, just like I didn't want to become a mom. I wanted to get married to a great guy first and have a honeymoon. I wanted a career. I didn't want to be bogged down with a child. I wasn't ready. I don't know who called him, but suddenly, Jake was back home with me too. He knew I was going through a hard time. We both cried a lot together. <sighs> this is actually really emotional. <laughs> Like, genuinely a bit of a tearjerker. But it all happened so fast. We were just laughing a minute ago. I feel so alone, I told him. But Jake told me something that completely opened up my mind. I felt alone for a long time, too. I know people are judging me. I had hoped for your support when I came out. No, oh, yeah, dang. Hit her while she's down. <laughs> He's come back to take what he's owed. Her life is falling to pieces and Jake shows up by her side to be like, hmm. Doesn't feel very good, does it? Then the gravity of what I did suddenly dawned on me. I kept saying that Jake and I were best friends, but I left when he needed me most. Oh, you're like the Avatar. It's okay, Sarah, he said. I knew it was a shock. He told me that he loved me. He told me that being gay wasn't going to change the fact that I would always be his best friend. This is very touching. Like, I've actually... 
quite enjoyed this one. <laughs> Then he told me that having a baby was one of the best things that could happen to anyone. I don't want this baby, Jake. Ah, oh, that's right. Jake always wanted a fam squad. Is she gonna like adopt it out to them? You can't mean that you want an abortion, Jake asked me with an angry voice. You can't do that. I sobbed and I nodded. I knew I could never do that. But what else were my options? You can do this. I'll be with you the whole time. You won't be alone, he said. This baby is going to be so loved by everyone. He begged me not to give the baby away. I nodded and agreed. I could be a mother to this baby if I wanted to. After a couple of weeks, I started to feel better with Jake by my side. Jeez, you can even hear it in her voice. She's getting choked up by this story. <laughs> this is a heavy one. It's actually a bit of an emotional roller coaster, but like in a actually decent storytelling way. He was my rock. I got my strength from him. Then one day, he told me some more news. He and Gilbert mm -hmm. decided to get married. I must have cried buckets of tears that day. I was so happy for him. I was happy that he was happy. Somehow, the thought of Jake and Gilbert stopped tormenting me. I loved them both very much, and I finally decided that there was no room for jealousy if I loved someone. They decided to get hitched a few months before I gave birth. Jake asked me to walk him down the aisle. His grandparents didn't approve of their marriage, but I was going to make sure that their wedding was going to be full of love and support. You see what I mean? Like, this is just a good story. <laughs> I always come here to just roast these because they're always so ridiculous. I don't even care that this was probably not true. I saw this happen in my head when I was just a child. I was wearing a lovely dress and Jake wore a tuxedo. Gilbert was waiting for us. It broke my heart a little to let Jake go, but if I was going to lose him to someone, It was good that I was going to give him to a good person like Gilbert. This is too cute. This is too cute for my little heart. <laughs> They never even left for a honeymoon. My two boys stayed with me during the whole pregnancy. You're so lucky, Sarah, Gilbert said. As much as I want to be a father, I guess I'll just settle for being your baby's favorite uncle. Hell no, Jake cried. I'm going to be this baby's favorite person. It warmed my heart to hear them that way. It was great. It was like having two husbands that were super supportive. <laughs> That's a little bit of a weird thing to say. <laughs> It's like the solution to this problem the whole time was to just get the two dudes to get married and then she's got two husbands. They took care of me. They held my hair back when I threw up. They even went out in the middle of the night when I wanted to eat some pickles. When I went into labor, I was brave enough to endure the pain. I was going to give this baby the best life face. it could ever have. So I gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. When Jake and Gilbert arrived to visit, I saw them hold the baby in their arms. They looked like a perfect family. I'm uh, finally giving you a wedding gift. Sorry it took so long, I told my boys. You're holding her in your arms. Then I handed Gilbert a stack of papers. It was for my baby's adoption. I was giving up my rights as a mother. I was giving them my baby. Oh, I called it. Of all the years I've known Jake, I've never seen him cry until that day. And I never really realized just how much I loved him. I loved all three of them. I was giving my baby to the best parents in the world. Jeez, okay. <laughs> Oh, that's a bit to swallow. I don't know why, but this is the saddest My Story animated story I've ever heard. Yeah, this one hits different. <laughs> I get it. There's probably things we can pull apart about it to make fun of it. But like, I don't know. I just actually kind of enjoyed that one. I <laughs> It's just kind of wholesome. So I don't know. If you want to get any of this lemon cotton merch, whoa, 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 uh, this lemon cotton merch, you can get some in the description below. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video, but now that it's done, please watch another one.